Nikukaribisha tena katika muendelezo wa masomo yetu ya jifunze Kiingereza kwa Kiswahili. Kumbuka ni mimi mwalimu wako mwalimu Rafael wa Kiingereza. Kama huja subscribe, hakikisha una subscribe ili kupata taarifa pindi tu tuwe kapo video mpya. Kumbuka masomo haya yanapatikana katika kitabu hiki kinachoitwa Jifunze Kiingereza kwa Kiswahili. Ni kitabu kikubwa kina zaidi ya kurasa mbili. Sasa kitabu hiki kina kufikia popote pale ulipo. Kwa hivyo kupata masomo haya kwa kina na kwa uhakika zaidi tafuta kitabu hiki cha jifunze kiingereza kwa Kiswahili. E, kupata kitabu fuata maelekezo yanayopita hapo chini. Lakini kumbuka pia kwamba huwa tuna madarasa ya WhatsApp ili mwalimu anaweza kufundisha moja kwa moja katika group. Kujiunga na magroup ya mwalimu au magroup yangu ya WhatsApp fuata maelekezo yanayopita hapo chini. Kwa hivyo leo tunaangalia e, sentensi tata ambazo watu wengi wamekuwa kiniuliza mwalimu tunakutana na na sentence moja ina maneno that that eh, na ina maneno had had sasa kumbuka hayo yote pia yamo humu ndani kwa kina kwa hivyo leo tunajifunza matumizi ya that that na had had eh, katika sentence moja eh, tuanzie na hii that na that Kuna kitu tunaita direct speech na kuna kitu tunaita indirect speech. Direct speech ni usemi halisi. Indirect speech ni usemi taarifa. Kama una kitabu chetu nina uhakika umesoma kwa kina mambo ya direct na indirect speech. Sasa usemi halisi ni nini? Usemi halisi ni unapotoa taarifa kwa kutumia maneno yale yale yaliyoyasema mtu. Na katika kuandika huwa tunaweka alama za 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 usemi nina uhakika umejifunza hayo kwa wingi kwenye kitabu chetu cha jifunze kiingereza kwa Kiswahili jinsi ya kuweka alama za usemi ziwekwe wapi si ziwekwe wapi sasa usemi taarifa ni kurudia maneno ni kutoa taarifa ila bila kurudia kile alichokisema yule mtu unatoa taarifa kwamba bwana fulani alisema moja mbili tatu hebu tuangalie kwa mfano kwa mfano sentence ya kwanza inasema John said This is a boy. John said, this is a boy. Tukiangalia sentence hii, John alisema, koma, tunafungua alama za usemi. This is a boy. Full stop na tunafunga usemi. Sasa ina maana hapa tumerudia, tunatoa taarifa lakini kwa kurudia maneno yale yale aliyoyatamka nani? Huyu John. Ndio maana unaona tumeweka alama za usemi kwa kufungua na kwa na kwa kufunga ina maana tumetumia maneno yale yale yaliyoyatamka yeye huyu John kwa hivyo ndio maana tukasema John said this is a boy kwa hivyo tumetumia maneno yale yale sasa twende kwenye usemi taarifa hatutaki kurudia kama alivyosema lakini tunataka kutoa taarifa ile ile sasa tunakuja tunasema John alisema ya kwamba yule alikuwa ni mvulana hapa tumesema John alisema huyu ni mvulana katika taarifa ya e, 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 ya kuripoti au taarifa ya e, 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 ya kutoa taarifa ambayo ni indirect tunasema kwamba John alisema kwamba yule alikuwa ni mvulana. Hatusemi John alisema huyu ni mvulana maana huenda John alisema mambo hayo miaka mitano iliyopita. Kwa hivyo tukisema John alisema huyu ni mvulana ina maana huyu mvulana yuko mpaka sasa hivi hapa tulipo. Kwa hivyo tunapotoa taarifa katika eh, kauli hii ya indirect huwa tunasema eh, eh, alisema kwamba alafu tunasema kwamba huyo alikuwa ni mvulana sasa tunapotoa hii indirect speech kitu cha kujifunza ni kwamba ile kwamba John alisema kwamba hiyo kwamba inaitwa that hiyo kwamba inaitwa that. Kwa hivyo unapotoa taarifa katika indirect speech lazima hii that ya kwanza iwepo. Sasa tumeshasema kwamba ukisema John alisema kwamba hiyo kwamba ni that. Sasa hii that ya pili inatoka wapi? Hii that ya pili inatokana na neno this ile iliyokuwepo katika e, usemi halisi. Tukisema this is a boy. This ni usemi halisi. Ukiongelea kwamba huyu unamwongelea sasa hivi lakini kwa kulipoti utasema yule ambaye yule naye pia kwa Kiingereza utamuita that ndio maana sasa hii this inabadilika kutoka direct speech inakuwa that kwamba hapa alisema huyu ni mvulana huku utasema alisema kwamba yule alikuwa ni mvulana 
ambaye alikuwa anamuongelea. Kwa hivyo sasa dhati ya kwanza inakuwa ni kwamba, dhati ya pili inakuwa ni he this. Kwa hivyo ndio maana sasa tunaposoma tunasema hivi John said that that was a boy. John said that that was a boy. Usikilize mpaka intonation yangu, yani sauti ninavyoipandisha. Tunasema John said that that was a boy. John said that that was a boy. Ina maana John alisema kwamba yule alikuwa ni mvulana. Tuangalie mfano wa pili. They said this is a mystic. Huu ni hii ni direct speech usemi halisi sio usemi taarifa. Walisema hili ni kosa. This is a mystic. Na tulisema hatusemi this, tunasema this. This ni T H E S E. He T H I S tunaitamka this na IS tunaitamka S. Kwa hivyo unapoenda kuongea na wazungu usiseme this is. Sema this is. This is a mistake. They said this is a mistake. Sasa hii ni usemi halisi. Twende kulipoti jambo lile lile walilo lisema hawa lakini sasa kwa taarifa. Kwa hivyo hapo wamesema walisema kwamba hili ni kosa. Kwa hivyo tukienda kutoa taarifa tunasema kwamba wale watu walisema kwamba hilo lilikuwa ni kosa wale watu walisema kwamba kwamba hiyo ya kwanza ni that hilo ambayo ndiyo hii this sasa imekuwa that hii hapa hilo lilikuwa ni kosa ndio maana tutasema they said that that was a mistake they said that that was a mistake kwa hivyo hii that ya kwanza ni inayokuja kwa neno kwamba na ile that nyingine ni ya neno this kwa hivyo tunasema they said that that was a mistake tuangalie sentence ya mwisho Eh, Anna said this house looks empty. Ana alisema nyumba hii inaonekana haina kitu. Ana alisema nyumba hii inaonekana haina kitu. Huu ni usemi halisi. Lakini tukienda kwa usemi taarifa ambayo ni indirect speech tutasema kwamba Ana alisema kwamba nyumba ile ilionekana kuwa haina kitu. Ana alisema kwamba hatuwezi tukasema ana alisema nyumba hii maana sisi hatupo pale ana alipokuwa anapasemea huenda hata ni miaka hamsini iliyopita kwa hivyo hatuwezi tukasema nyumba hii maana hatunayo hapa sisi tunatoa taarifa tu kwamba ana alisema kwamba nyumba ile ilionekana kuwa tupu ndio maana sasa ile kwamba ya kwanza ni that ile this house ya wakati huo alipokuwa anaongelea kwenye direct speech ndio that ya pili kwa hivyo sasa tunasema Anna said that that house looked empty. Anna said that that house looked empty. Kwa hivyo nina uhakika umejifunza jinsi ya kutumia that na that eh, katika sentence moja. Sasa tuingie sehemu ya pili ya kutumia maneno had na had. Eh, had moja hapa huwa inatumika katika eh, kitu kinaitwa perfect tense. Perfect tense kumbuka ni, ni wakati timilifu. Tunatumia maneno has na have na kama ni wakati uliopita tunatumia neno had. Kwa hivyo had ya kwanza inatumika kuonyesha kwamba tunaongelea umbo timilifu lililopita. Ile li na me tulikuwa tume. Nilikuwa nime. Hiyo had ndio had ya kwanza. Sasa hii had ya pili inatokea wapi? E, neno have linaweza likamaanisha kumiliki kitu lakini pia linaweza likamaanisha kula. Kwa mfano, eh, na inaweza ikatumika kama eat au take. Kwa mfano, I am having some tea. Eh, ninapata chai. Ina maana sasa hivi ndio na napata na, 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 na chai, yani niko ni katika process ya kupata chai. Kwa hivyo neno have linaweza li, likamaanisha kupata au kula. Kwa mfano kama ningesema ninapata nina chakula, ningesema I am having some food au i am eating some food. Kwa hivyo hiyo have na having inaonyeshana kile kitendo cha kula. Kumbuka tumesema had ya kwanza ni ya umbo timilifu ni ya perfect past perfect tense. Hii had ya pili inatokea wapi sasa? Hii have ya kula. Sasa ukiongelea wakati uliopita kwa mfano tupate mifano kidogo ili tu, tu, tuweze kwenda mpaka pale kwa had had. E, kuna sentence hapa inasema ninapata chakula au ninakula chakula ni sasa hivi kwa kiingereza utasema i am eating food au i am having food au some food hiyo ni sasa hivi
Sema I am eating food au I am having some food. Kama ni wakati uliopita na jambo likuwa linaendelea, unasema nilikuwa ninapata chakula. Unaweza sema I was eating some food au I was having some food au I was having food. Sasa huo ni wakati ulio pita endelevu. Sasa je na kama ni wakati uliopita timilifu ile ya lina me, nilikuwa nimepata chakula. Unaweza ukasema I had eaten some food au I had eaten some food lakini kumbuka eaten eat ni sawa na neno have kwa kwa maana nyingine sasa timilifu ya have ni had kwa hivyo sasa baada ya kusema I had eaten unaweza ukasema I had had kwa hivyo ndio maana sasa baada ya kusema I had eaten food eh, ni sawa sawa na kusema I had had food. I had had food. Sasa I had hii ni ya tense, ya pa perfect tense. Past perfect. Lakini hii had inavutwa ni ya kupata mlo au kula. Kwa hivyo hii had imekuja ku replace neno eaten. Kwa sababu tumesema ku have pia ni kula. Na wakati uliopita wa have ni had. Kwa hivyo sasa badala ya kutumia neno eh, past participle ya eat ni eaten kwa hivyo badala ya kutumia past participle ya have tunatumia had kwa hivyo sasa ukisoma sentence hii unasema i had had food i had had food au unaweza ukasema i had had some food kama ulikuwa unasema labda nilikuwa nimeshapata breakfast nilikuwa nime lina me ujue lina me inatumiaga had na ile pata ni had pia kwa sababu ni wakati uliopita kwa hivyo unasema i had had breakfast i had had breakfast ulipokuja nilikuwa nimeshapata eh, kifungua kinywa when you came i had had breakfast au oh, i had had breakfast when you came i had had breakfast when you came i had had some food when you arrived i had had some food when you arrived hiyo ni sawa na kusema i had eaten some food when you arrived kwa sababu ile have kumbuka maana nyingine yake ni kula na sasa wakati uliopita wa had wa have ni had. Kwa hivyo sasa tunaitumia had ile kuonyesha kula wakati uliopita, lakini tunatumia had ile ya kwanza kuonyesha ile li na me. Nilikuwa ni me, hiyo huitwa had. Kwa hivyo nina uhakika leo umejifunza jinsi ya kutumia that that na had had. Lakini sasa unaposoma useme I had had food, a a. Useme I had had some food. I had had some breakfast usiseme i had had some breakfast hapana tukutane kipindi kijacho kupata masomo haya kwa undani tafuta kitabu chetu cha jifunze kiingereza kwa Kiswahili madarasa yetu ya WhatsApp yapo ukitaka fuata maelekezo ya kujiunga kitabu hiki unakipata popote ulipo duniani fuata maelekezo ya jinsi ya kukipata mpaka darasa lijalo ni mimi mwalimu wako mwalimu Rafael wa Kiingereza usisahau kusubscribe share na kulike karibu sana